In this video, I will show you how to use the background tasks framework to start a task while your app is in the foreground and continue working on the task for up to several minutes while your app is moved to the background. This actually requires pretty little code, but a tiny bit of setup. I have already prepared the code here in Xcode for you and I will walk you through it step by step, including all of the setup you have to do. So the first thing you have to do is you have to create a task identifier and this is probably your bundle ID and then a dot and then a task ID. So this is just an example here. So obviously you should replace this with your own bundle ID and your own task ID, but you should copy this string here because you will need it in your info.plist file in a second. So with your task identifier created, we have to head into your project settings and signing and capabilities under your current iOS target. Then you hit the plus capability and you add the background modes capability. I have already added it in this project, hence why it's not in the list. And then in there, you have to select background processing. Next, you have to move into your info.plist file and you can either do this here or in the info.plist file in the project navigator, depending if it's already here, otherwise you'll just do it in your project settings. And then you'll have to make sure that you include this string here. So the permitted background task scheduler identifiers string, I've already also written it down here. So the uh, key is BG task scheduler permitted identifiers. And you'll add that to your info.plist and that will automatically create an array of string and you will add a new item to that array and that item should be your task identifier that you just created in your code. So with both of these pieces of setup done, we can now move to the code and how to actually implement this background task. So first of all, we create a BG continued processing task request. And this is one of the many types of task requests that uh, background tasks has. And continued implies here that the task starts while the app is in the foreground and it should always start by a user action. So in this case, it starts if the user clicks the start task button and then it continues working while the app is in the background. You create that request with your task identifier and then you can give it a title and a subtitle and both of these are shown in the UI. So make sure that these are meaningful strings. If you want to use the device's GPU in your task, for example, to render a video or photo, you can use the request.required resources API to yeah, add the .gpu case here. Of course, you should first of all make sure that the GPU is a supported resource at the current state of the current system. So might not always be the case. So you will always have to add this check here first. But in our case, we don't really need the GPU. So I just commented it out so you know how it works. All right, and then you create your actual logic of the task that takes a bit longer to process. So for that, you use the task scheduler dot shared. So you can, of course, extract this to a variable because you'll access it another time down here. But in my case, I just use BG task scheduler dot shared. And then you first of all, register for a task with your task identifier. And then here you can set this to a dispatch queue. So this one is set to main, but you can also set this to global depending on the work that you're doing. And then you get your task in here and you will use this task object. So let me quickly show you. Yeah, it's a BG task. You will use this to update your progress. So the little uh, progress indicator in the UI will always represent the current state of your task. In order to do that, you will have to unwrap it or to um, yeah, optional cast it here to a BG continued processing task because this API here can be used for several different BG task types and we need a BG continued processing task as we also yeah, created a request for this. Then there's two important APIs here that you need to use to keep the progress updated. So first of all, you will use task.progress.totalUnitCount to say how many task units you have. And then whenever you completed one unit, you can set your task.progress.completedUnitCount to that unit. Now, in this example, I don't actually perform any work. I just go through a for loop that takes a few seconds. So in this case, it's 25,000 uh, progress units. That's why I set the total unit count to 25,000. And then I always set the completed unit count to I, so the current iteration of this for loop. Now in here, you would actually, or instead of this for loop, and instead of this 25,000, you will actually have your implementation of the video exporting or whatever it is that takes a long time. 
some data analysis, some model training, whatever it is. So once you have your task implemented, you can then try background task scheduler.shared to submit this request. And by submitting the request, you actually also start the, the task. One important thing is that you cannot start the task with the same identifier twice. So if you want to run multiple tasks, I need to have different identifiers. I think this should be obvious given the nature of a identifier. One more thing to note is that you cannot test this in the preview or in the simulator. You will have to test this on a real device. So in this case, you will have to have a real device running iOS 26 or of course iPadOS 26 to test this out.